Every single day, 2.5 quintillion bytes of data are created. That's enough to fill 10 million Blu-ray discs every single day. Emails, notifications, social media updates, AI suggestions, endless Netflix streaming, there's always more. More to read, more to learn, more to do. It is frankly overwhelming. Information overload isn't just about the stress we feel. It's about lost potential, lost focus, lost time. The irony? In this information age, it is not the amount of knowledge that matters, it's knowing what to ignore. In this video, we're tackling a massive problem, how to deal with information overload in an exponential data world. Together, we'll explore why information flow is outpacing human capacity, how AI agents are both helping and hindering us. And most importantly, the methodologies you need to cut through the noise and focus on what truly matters. So here is my question for you. Are you consuming information or is it consuming you? By the end of this video, you'll know how to thrive in the AI data store. Hey, my name is Greg from Renew. I'm a master coach helping people, teams, and organizations to know themselves, design their future selves, and become their future selves. Renew and I are here to help you live a life where you have control. Let's take a moment to wrap our heads around the sheer scale of the world we live in. Just two decades ago, we were excited about downloading a single song in five minutes. Now, we can stream entire libraries in seconds, while AI curates personalized playlists just for us. And yet, only a tiny fraction of that information is actually relevant to you. The rest, it's noise, clutter, and distractions. Stuff that pulls your focus in a thousand directions. Now let's add another layer to this data explosion, the rise of AI. Tools like ChatGPT, Jasper, Notioning, they're incredible at creating and organizing content. But they're also producing data at an unprecedented rate. Every time you ask an AI a question, it generates thousands of words in seconds. Factual, fake, or hallucinated. It's like trying to dream from a fire hose. The more data we create, the harder it becomes to find what's meaningful. The challenge isn't just accessing information anymore, it's curating it. Your ability to filter, prioritize, and make sense of all this noise has become your greatest superpower or your biggest weakness. Let me ask you this. How much of the information you consume daily actually helps you move closer to your goals? Or how much is just filler? Here's a quick exercise. Take out a piece of paper or open your note tab. Write down the top three sources of information you engage with daily. Use apps, social media, emails. Now ask yourself, are these sources genuinely adding value or just creating more noise? While technology is evolving at lightning speed, your brain isn't. Our brains are incredible machines capable of processing complex information and solving problems. But they have limits. In fact, according to cognitive load theory, the human brain can only hold about seven chunks of information at a time. Beyond that, your mental bandwidth gets maxed out. Think of your brain as a sponge. It's designed to absorb information. But what happens when you pour too much water onto a sponge? It leaks. And not just the unnecessary stuff, even the good, important stuff starts to slip away. Now imagine trying to make decisions or learn something new while your brain is linking information left and right. This is what's happening to tens of millions of people every single day. But the results are really not great. Here are some effects of information overload. Decision fatigue. The more decisions you make in a day, the worse the quality of those decisions become. Ever wonder why you can decide what to eat after a long day? That's decision fatigue. Reduce creativity. Creativity thrives on mental space. When your mind is cluttered, it's like trying to plant flowers in a field full of wheat. There's no room for ideas to grow. Chronic stress. Constant exposure to overwhelming information triggers your stress response. And over time, that can lead to burnout, not just in your work, but in your life. Take a moment to reflect. What areas of your life are suffering because you're overloaded with information? Is it your focus at work? Your ability to connect with loved ones? Or maybe just your peace of mind? Let's do something practical right now. Think about the last decision you made today. Maybe it was what to eat for lunch or how to respond to an email. How much time and energy did you spend on it? Was it more than it deserved? Write it down and start noticing these patterns. You like this video so far? 
then you know what to do. Also subscribe and put on the notifications if you want to receive content like this every week. And if you're interested in this topic, then make sure to check out in the video description all the links and YouTube videos that will dig further into it. AI is everywhere. From the apps we use daily to the algorithms guiding what we see online, artificial intelligence is reshaping how we process information. But here is a question. Is AI your greatest ally or your worst enemy in the battle against information overload? Well, let's start with the good stuff. AI has incredible potential. It can summarize reports, filter emails, and even suggest your next steps based on your goals. For myself, I've created a custom branding AI, a custom YouTube video AI, AI one for writing a book, and one to know everything about my health data. Bit scary when I think about it. But AI is only as good as how you use it. Without the right filters and boundaries, it can become a floodgate for even more data. Notifications, recommendations, suggestions, it's like giving the fire holes we talked about earlier a turbo boost. Here is what I mean. Ever ask an AI tool to help you research something simple? You might get an avalanche of data, pages of text, endless insights, and a list of next steps longer than your to-do list. Think of AI as a sieve. Used well, it filters out the noise and gives you the gold. But if you keep pouring more and more into it without setting limits, it overflows and you're back to square one. And it can also make you a lot dumber. If you progressively replace your own thinking, ID generation, decisions, you will progressively lose the habit to do those things. In other words, use it or lose it. And I'm talking about your brain. AI is neutral. It's a tool. It's not inherently good or bad. It's all about how you use it. Here is a simple exercise to take control. Pick one AI tool you use regularly. Maybe it's ChatGPT or your email assistant. Spend five minutes today adjusting its settings. Turn off unnecessary notification. Set clear boundaries. Make it work for you, not against you. When it comes to AI, less is often more. The goal isn't to use every tool available. It's to master the ones that actually help you filter, prioritize, and focus. To manage the flow of information, you need systems. You need to curate what comes in and how you process it. Think of it like tending a garden. You pull out the weeds, nurture the seeds, and focus on what actually grows. The first step, cut the noise. Digital minimalism is all about reducing the number of inputs you allow into your life. Here is how to start. Audit your ad and subscriptions. How many of them do you really use? Keep only the ones that add genuine value. Turn off unnecessary notifications. You don't need your phone buzzing every time someone likes the post. It's distracting, not productive. Use a limited number of trusted sources of information. For that, you need to progressively judge which source of information gives you the most impact for the time you spend there. Challenge question. If you could keep just three sources of information in your daily life, which one would they be and why? Next, let's talk about information fasting. Just like intermittent fasting for your body, this is about creating periods where you consciously avoid consuming data. Set no info zones during your day. For example, no emails or social media before 10 a.m. Schedule focused work blocks. You can use the Pomodoro techniques, 25 minutes of focused work followed by a five minute break. During those 25 minutes, no checking your phone, no browsing. Finally, let's talk about curation. This isn't just about what you remove, it's about what you choose to keep. Prioritize high quality sources. Look for information that's evidence-based, align with your goals and free of unnecessary fluff. Limit your inputs to a manageable number. A few newsletters, one podcast, one book at a time. It's enough. Apps like Feedly or Pocket can help you save and organize the most valuable content. So you're not overwhelmed. What matters isn't how much you consume, it's why you consume it. Are you looking for clarity, inspiration, direction? When you focus on intent, you shift from being reactive to being proactive. Instead of letting information dictate your day, you choose what adds value to your life and what doesn't. Think of it like driving with GPS. You don't just wander around hoping to arrive somewhere meaningful. You set your destination first. Your intent is your GPS. It guides you through the chaos, ensuring you're heading toward what truly matters. When was the last time you consumed something that genuinely changed your perspective or moved you closer to your goals? Before engaging with any content, ask yourself, what's my goal? How does this align with what I want to achieve today, this week, or this year? 
If your goal is spiritual growth, for example, prioritize books, courses, or articles that foster spirituality. If it's relational well-being, you might want to cut absorbing information and instead spend more time face-to-face -face with people you love. Decide ahead of time how much you'll dedicate to consuming information and stick to it. For example, limit social media scrolling to 15 minutes a day or set an end time for reading emails. Think of boundaries as guardrails on a winding road. They keep you safe and intentional, preventing distractions from pulling you off course. At the end of each day, ask yourself, what information added the most value? What didn't? Use these insights to refine your approach tomorrow. Here is a challenge for today. Write down the three most valuable pieces of information you consumed in the past months and why they mattered. Then write one thing you'll stop consuming because it's not adding value. Small steps, be clarity. So you get the message, your power lies in your ability to be intentional. When you focus on what truly adds value to your life and let go of the rest, you create clarity, purpose, and momentum. Let me leave you with this quote from Sir Edmund Hillary. It is not the mountain we conquer, but ourselves. Overcoming information overload is about conquering your own habits, your choices, and your focus. And for more about how our humanity can survive and thrive in the age of AI, you might be interested in why emotional intelligence is our superpower.